I will be like a mentor so the students come over, they can have this video mentorship of the conspirators. Yeah. Yeah.
So there will be ten in those two cases. And again, because this is a dual degree, it's like dual admission, so there are students here and there are students there. Okay, so there will be no, no problem. You check the, the math courses and they're fine and what else? So, so the math and chemistry, what they take here, and the physics. And you of course, the physics, everything that take, and they will take here, they will, they will be the same as they over there. Yeah, that, that, those courses fit together right. very well. That's kind of remarkable. Yeah. How well that's done. I don't think we'll have, um, I'll be advising them. We also have an advisor in the department. We have a relatively small department. We have 35 students. So it's not the advising of this hospital. Uh, quickly now, I just want to let you know 
we um, submitted our annual report. Um, it's on our website if you want to read it. I received approval for the annual report from um, NSF, um, Terry um, with uh, grants officer for the power grant. And she was very pleased with it. And um, the Research Foundation, they approved our annual report. So we're all up to date with them. Okay? And um, I just want to do a quick. <coughs> Instagram. 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 Instagram.
But what's the other niche? YouTube? That's, yeah, YouTube for YouTube, videos. YouTube, there, there were other That's, ones she was, I mean, and she was saying, I don't really like that one. And she thought, I like this. And you know, What's that? I don't know. So, yeah, so there's, so I, I, I think this is a great thing. Um, the problem is, we can't get, I know everybody's ready to eat. Last thing is, we can't get the word out until we have the degrees on with New York City and with CUNY on the Chancellor's report. So we cannot get the word out there. But we can compel all the infrastructure to do that. Okay. Um, in general, he felt that it was an exceedingly successful start. So um, <clears throat> I think that's. Uh, there. Uh, so why don't we um, have lunch? Because I can feel people kind of. Yes. Before we go to lunch, could you could just clarify for me specifically mm -hmm. what you mean by a dual degree. Okay. Dual, uh, there are articulation programs, which is very typical. That's where you have an agreement that um, this course equals this course. And then there are problems with that because it often what happens for community college and senior college is sort of change things and not include community college, and you know, they sometimes we have a disconnect in that with some of our articulations. So the dual degree, and I wish Ross was here because he's so articulate about this, but it literally means that it's a single degree, okay, which is um, the, all the courses they are taking here at Hostos are equivalent to a course at Lehman. But the students will get an associate degree. They will. It's kind of like a BAMA. Yeah, okay. okay. I mean, that's yeah. kind yeah. of an example of how, you know, where you, when you register, you, you kind of, that's the best example I can think of. Um, you know, so yes, they definitely will graduate. Okay, if they want to graduation, do all that. Um, but they will actually be 60 credits into their yeah, degree. Yeah. Sure. yeah. So, does that help? Yeah, of course. The reason I was asking is because currently there has been some talk on our campus, we don't know if it comes from the Texas system, yeah. where what they've done is create where the student is, the student, say, for example, starts at a community college, makes a course, mm -hmm. transfers over to a senior college, and as soon as they get the equivalent of 60 credits, they automatically get the associate degree from the community college while they're in the senior college. Mm -hmm. The advantage to that system mm -hmm. is that nobody uses the student or, or loses the credit for the student. Is that if they were on the chemistry track or the earth science track, 
um, they would be slightly off of the traditional natural science track. So if they were on chemistry, we would have them sign a contract and say, you want, we want you to be aware that if you go back to natural science, you are not going to have, you're going to have to take a couple of extra courses. And these are the courses that you have to take. So that they're aware up front. Does that, Francis, go to them? Yes. We want to make sure that they're aware of that. So that, they, you know, the students do that shifting around. Um, I personally, you know, have some ideas on that. And I think when we talk about brainstorming for the, the phase one, we can talk about that. Do you have an idea? Well, I was, was going to say, because if, if to answer the, uh, our, faculty, our colleagues' question, if we wait for a semester, mm -hmm. you know, that's a semester, because they're taking the, they should have or be almost finished with the developmental courses that they're taking. So you've got a semester that's really in limbo. By the time you acclimate them into the second semester, what we did with the teacher academy is that from high school, or wherever the student is, GED program, whatever it is, that student is signing up for the teacher academy. We're going to have to say from Jump Street that you're coming into this program. We can't. We don't have the luxury of the semester of looking at 60 credits and they have to do this right away, assuming that they're not going to fail anything. But now, I, but I'm my, uh, yeah. now my, <laughs> how how do we get to know them as students? If they're going to be persistent, if they have to have the ability. Right. No, I don't. I, I don't want. No, I don't want to sign them on as candidates in the first semester. I would even like to suggest that they qualify when they pass all their placement yes. tests. Because that is yes. their biggest obstacle yes. here. And once they pass the placement tests, then they will qualify, and plus some other stuff. Okay, GPA, what these are. Then they see the the attitude. Some of the other, just you know, you have to go to in the summer, you know, before the semester mm -hmm. starts, you have a group camp or you have to get you know, a state intensive mm -hmm. where they're doing some chemistry, a math, or whatever it is, so that they're acclimated to the yes. house, mm -hmm. acclimated to the program, you get to see something. Yes. Um, I, I, it's just a thought. It's just a thought. But I think we should absolutely. use the summer more than waiting until they come in. The oh, no, absolutely. We have, you know, our big, my vision is they will be doing summer um, internships every summer. As soon as they're a candidate. Okay. Okay. Now we can discuss. Do we want to have three candidates? Do we want to have three candidates? Okay. I mean, you know, do we want to like open it wide in the beginning and then start narrowing it down, or do we want to put some? Um, requirements in place and, and open it up and then narrow it down. I, I realize you want to wait until the brainstorming session and everybody's chomping at the bit to get something to eat, but I'm just thinking in terms of, we, uh, as you already brought up with the idea of mentoring, we start from Jump Street and mentoring these folks yeah. before they come in in September. We utilize that summer that summer Absolutely. is totally underutilized. And, you know, what do we mean by mentoring? What do we mean by having this, uh, for lack of a better word, boot camp or summer intensive. You know, what, what are we envisioning? Uh, and I think we start with a small cohort. You know, we're not going to get to that. There aren't actually yeah, huge right numbers of people in the science department, right? So, let, I, you know, so we're not like looking at a massive number of people, okay? Um, but what I, I have a kind of sneaky plan, a sneaky idea. And we have all these allied health students who come in saying, I'm going to be a nurse, I'm going to be a radiologist, I'm going to be an dental hygienist. And they just, they're very career focused. track for focus, okay? Then they go through these courses, they go, they are not accepted. And they can be very good students and not accepted because there's only a small number of seats. So I say, Bam! Come in and say, here's another career track. Okay? It takes your love of science and it gives you a job, you know, that you aim for. Do you see that? I, I see, I, I see. I'm just thinking that nursing and teaching are apples and oranges, but I, know. I don't want to belabor everybody. No, no, no. And that's yeah. where I always come back to, and I'm, I'm, because I'm on the education side of it, 
the disposition is a critical component. Mm -hmm. Okay. Teacher disposition. A failure to go teach. Right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, every time I say this word, he smiles. Okay. Okay, yes. It just, it just seems to me that you look at apples and oranges, but remember what the other teachers okay. uh -huh. They don't know anything. Kids come to these schools looking for a pathway to a job. Mm -hmm. The one thing they don't know is a viable career yes. is teaching. Yes. What they usually think of as teaching is if I fail at everything else. Exactly. This has been a serious problem. So it seems to me that if the way your program is structured, if you have your students do all the necessary background information in their first year, the second year is when you sign them up for this particular program, mm -hmm. but that gives them one full year of the joint courses. You utilize the summer in between mm -hmm. in a workshop point where you begin to take those students who are expressing an interest in STEM and bring them to an intense workshop where you talk about the benefit of teaching as a viable career in the STEM areas. So they, they I run into the same problem with our senior college students. They don't know that. And so if you, if you build that into your program, I think that's the way you can capture the I student really like and, and then move forward. I really believe it's like the best kept secret in, you know, career services in the United States. People just don't know. And the, the number of, and the shortage in the STEM area is, is frighteningly. I mean, the American Association of Scientists came out with the um, report, um, uh, the rising storm rapidly um, reaching category five. Mm -hmm. That's how they feel. That's the shortage across all everything. The professionals, the teachers, everything in STEM. So this is a big deal. Okay, why don't we have some lunch? We can talk some more. Talk about some more ideas. Um, <laughs> And they get the initial 
study this is the local science of news, and again, it is all science of news because they have a boss. Okay, that's the equipment for the equipment for the schools. Okay, and so that was the and initially it was only this demonstration and okay. they at the moment they're funded by the Puerto Rico and Department of Education and they have some external funding from some pharmaceutical industry Pfizer and I think Amgen biotechnological industries. So again, this is what they think is it was established in 1991. It's the center of uh, offering and science experience for K-12 teachers and students. And it, one more time, it's enhancing their interest in science and other in curiosity, chemistry, biology, geology, physics, and mathematics. They keep expanding. They start in chemistry because the, the, the BI of this project is, is in chemistry. Uh, so they start with this chemistry demonstration. <coughs> They, and basically, uh, I'll show you some, some pictures. They will have this interactive demonstration in chemistry and physics and biology with the idea of showing kids in school that, that science is hard. Okay, and again, they do this demonstration and they, they have designed demonstrations so that they, they can be adapted to any level. So they go to kindergarten and they do these demonstrations and then they do something else for the guys high school and so on. And they, in terms of chemistry, these are some of the demonstrations they, they do. They have these four cylinders where they have acid phase the reactions. They will see all these changes in colors and they will tell you what is happening. Prepare oxidation, deduction, reaction, the composition of oxygen and peroxide. They, they show them what is specific heat and right? you can measure that and that will be that. How is that associated to different material, combustion polymers? They uh, do this polymeric synthesis where they get this slime and all kinds of, of weird things. And then they, they, they look at changes in pressure and temperature, show them some ideal gas law, and, and, and try to correlate that to what they're doing. And this is one of the favorite, <coughs> the guys high, the high demonstration. They do that, and they also are using this liquid nitrogen. So this is a typical uh, demonstration. This is a, a coliseum in, in Mayagüez. And uh, if we are Mayagüez, so the way they set this is they have different stations in the middle. And they have the people, the, the kids sitting around. They go to school, but this particular one is there. So this is in an in a, in a auditorium in a school. And you can see here you have this um, acid base reactions and they put some liquid nitrogen and it looks interesting. <coughs> and recently they did what they were supposed to do with OSA treatment, what this comes in at Madison jumps into the idea immediately. And they went and did a, uh, they call it a show or a demonstration. They did that in, in Wisconsin. Okay, and this was something that came out in the, in the press. And it was the first time they were presenting this type of, of uh, demonstrations in the United States. And they wrote a proposal and they got funded and, and they got come from an SF. Was this, was this, when? this was last year. I think they went to Puerto Rico, they were 
times the work is going to be the single niche, and they say let's do something, let's do a crystallization competition where students will give, they will give all the materials and they will prepare these crystals and then they, they will be competing who will prepare the best crystals, the faster crystals, and that's that's the group that was participating there. Okay, so you see was, there will have been two competitions, then schools participated and had one one seventy five students and single teachers. <laughs> and the other thing they have been doing is visiting schools and so, so they go to schools, they do demonstration and then they sometimes they go back to some schools and, and talk to them about different topics. Okay, and these are some of the things as you can see they're talking about some relatively and and modern synthesis of long nano particles and fluorescence and so on. Because they can take those equipments to the lab and do this, some experiments. So the second thing that they have been doing is this module training, teachers and student training activities. So they go there and they, they recruit students and, and teachers to participate in summer workshops and they have these follow-up activities where they visit the schools, they visit the, the, the they go to Maya Wilson University and they have this really fun Saturday academic. So they go to the university on Saturday to do some work. Okay, and, and basically the summer workshops are focused on trying to link the science courses that they're teaching and research. So they gather some research, they get involved in some research programs, and then they get all this equipment that the university will provide in order for them to do the experiment at school. And here are some of the topics that they cover in those workshops. So you have some crystallization things, some catalysis, a whole bunch of nanotechnology. And because um, we, we, there is some uh, proteins formation, some Brownian motion, and so on. So they cover a lot of things. And, and what happens is that some of the professors at the university will, will you know, kind of volunteer to do this type of work during you know, the semester, during the summer. And they cover different topics. So they, they have experts on each area when they're giving this summer workshop. There was one and three teachers who participated and they did six work This is a follow-up. So after you get this this summer, then you follow up and then you have more in the in the introduction to nanotechnologies, more crystallographic crystallographic techniques. And again, this is because well they, they have this collaboration with people in Spain, plus they have like a, an X-ray machine in Puerto Rico, so they can do their own crystal determination. They have this other thing that is called the teachers teaching teachers. That's something that came with Wisconsin now. So we have something like that related to that. And again here we have 19 teachers participating. So this is basically the statistics. These are the university fellows. One more time. This is from the, the workshops are by, by the the experts in the area, but the fellows are under class and class students, and they're paid. Actually, some of the class students, their stipend comes from these programs. So it's just, I used to have class students, and I would always send them there, because I didn't have to pay. So they would take care of them. Uh, and so here you see the teachers that have been trained, the schools that they have visited, and the students that they have trained. Okay, so, so some of the additional perspective and uh, teachers can modify the curriculum trying to incorporate these modern topics and the applications. Uh, one hundred uh, one hundred and six public students, uh, high school students in Puerto Rico, public students particularly participated and the data show that the schools, that the students that came from those schools, the, the people that went into the university uh, went to two point two school school higher than the people that didn't go to, to those workshops. So I mean, it's, it, 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 like, the chemistry department, the chemistry department is huge. It's like 300 students. In mm -hmm. Lima, we have like 35. Mm -hmm. There we have 300. Before 1991, the department was like 50. OK, so they start going to, to schools to recruit students. So they get into all the this demonstration and these workshops. And the other interesting thing is, as I mentioned, the class students are the ones running this, and so they're TAs, and they have the measurements of, of, of how good are, are they as TAs, and they do much better than others, 
and that's based on the student evaluations and some general chemistry examinations that they take. So they not, not only you know, do this, this work, but they get trained okay, as, as TAs. This is a, a, another thing that they're doing with Wisconsin research experience for teachers. They spent six weeks on campus and intensive professional development program in 2012. So for last year, so they start with Wisconsin. They have five teachers from Wisconsin and six from Puerto Rico. They all got together and, and they started some um, research. And they, they, again, they were funded by NSF, and so they spent once year, one year in Wisconsin and one year in Puerto Rico. Probably they want to spend it on Puerto Rico, but mm -hmm. connected to that, they have these research and the real programs, which is research experience in undergrad and the institution is a, is a an NSF program and they have three grants. Only one, one three grants, one in nanotechnology, chemistry of materials for renewable energy and some chemistry and chemical engineering. The thing that is important is that the, the UPR higher was in the engineering campus in Puerto Rico. So that's why all this business of nanotechnology, materials, and renewable energy, and so on is a very, very important topic. So the program and combined those 30, 35 students annually, 85% of those students pursue master or PhD. Okay. And this is the, the lab quest self-contained portable data, sensors, and lab equipment. This is a, 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 a UV this spectrophotometer. Do you have this equipment here? Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is nice. <laughs> you know, and, and, as we were using it over there, in, in Lima, but they go to school with this equipment, and, and they, they have different experiments. This is one they do. They prepare these nanoparticles, small nanoparticles, by combining this reagent. And I mean, nanoparticles can be prepared by mixing two things and nothing else, like you can see here. And then you will get different colors depending on the size of the nanoparticles that are formed, which is the beauty of, of this business. So then you take them and take the, the UVBIS spectra, and you can see that you get different colors, okay? Because they have different colors, because they have different sizes. Also, I mean, it's, it's amazing. This is the first, the, this principle of quantum dots being explained to high school kids. Okay, so they know that. And the teacher perspective, they think the students improve their skills and they have very interaction with other students with teamwork, you know, a critical thing. And again, they, they measure all these things. So this is the, our idea based on that and, and the collaboration that we want to start with, that we want to uh, build this from center for research and education in biology and chemistry. And we, we want to do the science demonstration and, and school visits. And we want teachers and students to be working but in our particular case in the biomedical area. Because I think the strength of human is in that area of biology and chemistry. And for that, well, we, we want this to start reaching between community, creating bridges between community college and human, human and worker. So that we have a patient, which is what we're trying to do. The PhD program is something that we're already talking about, the MD PhD program, which are really, really competitive, but they're really doing like their portfolio. Okay, so, so that's it. Oh my God. So, you have a little bit of a class at the top, so you can have some more that you want to talk about. You said you said it was good. Yeah. How do you say it? Any other questions? <laughs> I don't want to answer that one. No, but for me, it's just a mind blowing that, that it's not happening already. The model yeah. is there. It works. It works. The right. data is there. Well, look at all the answers. Well, right. The thing is, you need the resources. You need, for example, and we, we need, I, I remember when I went to the, to the administrators at team and said, like, so where are we going to put exactly. the equipment? And they said, well, let's get it moving. And in getting a room in Genesis to pull the equipment that we need might take like one year. You know, so I think that all the programs can do that. But in terms of the chancellor, has that ever been brought yeah, to the yeah, chancellor's yeah. office and not? The president. I got a proposal for the ah. president. And the president brought it to you? Yeah, he said, oh, this is a great idea, but we're still waiting for some time. Mm -hmm. we, we need to write a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a
the thing is that I, I'm kind of, I, I, I believe that if, if anyone wants to do this, they should they, could. they should give a false expiry form to do something. We ask like for $50,000, nothing else we go. The thing is that this is very, very hard to report. Everything can be done by these people. They asked me, they said like, look, buy us a ticket, we'll pay the hotel, and we'll go and train you. Because we need to, you know, we need to get things together and we need to be trained by them. I mean, I was there, but you know, and then we need the students. So, so there is a lot of logistics that we have to put together, and for that we need space and money and time, which is what we have been able to convince him and to do. So. You know what I think is that <coughs> it might be helpful if They are adding like teacher preparation and they are looking more and more at their K-12 and that the fact that you increase mm -hmm. the number from 50 to 300 in um, in college is exactly what it is. <coughs> you know, so I'm saying I'm just sort of here something I have yeah, one question. The 300 people you mentioned and the students who are yeah. in yeah. increasing in number. In chemistry. Yeah, yeah chemistry, chemistry, yes. yes. Uh, but my point is that uh, they are, suppose 85% of them are doing PhD or master's. No, no, but it's not the same number. They are the RDU. The, the yeah, yeah, plus minus something. Right. But how many of them really want to be a chemistry teacher? Well, we don't have to. We, we, don't, not, we, we don't know that. That, that wasn't have, their purpose. Right, there is a PhD, they can go to industry and they can work out. Sure. Right. There is no lack of resources for creating interest among the people for chemistry. It's already there. What's the interest for teachers? But that was not what we Yeah, but, 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 Specific programs in this yes. particular case would be engineering school and yes. the chemistry department. That's it. That there was no education because we don't have that, have that over there. In here, it's my, my belief, and that's why I mentioned here that with what we want to do is get something similar, but we want to get this thing going where students will go to education, PhD, or MPD. Okay, so I mean, we, we, we need to invent something that they have to do. But no, because I would really like you to, to pursue what, what Professor Church was saying. I think that this is such a wonderful model. And they keep talking that there's the money there. Yeah. But unfortunately, sometimes people like you or people like me, we don't know how to manage, I mean, to just go around and, yeah. and get the money. So if that is a place that, have you explored that? And have that been, they, have they told you no? Because if not, I would beg you to please do it. Because people in the Bronx see it so bad. So as as and if we're talking about us fostering yeah. the interest in our students, if we wait until they appear, sometimes it's kind of late. But if we expose them from K to 12, we will be uh, yeah. just creating that kind of the seat for it later on to, to be in the, in the sciences. And that's the problem that we have here. The, the students in, in the Bronx do not have access to science. And then I exposed them. So that would be personal. Something to be interesting, fun fact, and that is that um, by the age of 12, most people who go into engineering have made the decision to go into engineering. Okay, so it is. Yes. And you know, when I keep thinking, it is, we keep talking about, you know, science teachers, you know, like high school or something. I'm like, I would like to see a program that goes. That, yes. that provides strong science. That would be revolutionary in the past. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You see all these kids are making. Oh, oh yeah, they're yeah. all Yeah, that is wonderful. Yeah, that's, 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 that's the that's the that's main thing that is that. Due to this collaboration that we have with Lima, I believe that, you know, we are establishing that, that bridge that is there already. We are trying to do that. Actually, that you know, in the summer, but I believe that we need to to be more proactive with the higher schools that they are around yeah. us. And middle school and to bring those school. higher schools here. Yes. 
to do that kind of maybe this is not exactly the same uh, experiments, but we can do some experiments. We can do that kind of science day or whatever, and then to to do that in a place that is going to be you know facilitated for that. Remember, here we have. Uh, one point that is uh, very difficult to do the demonstrations, that is, uh, you know, the, the safety issue. Yeah, the safety issue. Uh, maybe in Puerto Rico is, uh, you know, is right, easy. You put it in the top of your car. And you right, right. And then you, you have that in the, in the gym, but here you can do it. I mean, no no, the demo, but anyway, we, we can find demonstrations. That's not exactly the same, 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 but very really similar ones. And with smaller groups, and little by little, and we are going to repeat one, two, three, and then little by little, we are going to do it with the students. I mean, I know a lot of people work in NSF. Yes, in the last few years, I got to know a lot of people in NSF. So I mean, let me. All right, with me. You know, Benito, see, please, please. Talk to my 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 chancellor or not my my provost or something. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
but uh, there is some, um, you know, link that is lost. I don't know which one is. Uh, is it necessary to have very good connections with the Board of Education, with the teachers that they are teaching here in the high schools in the Bronx, uh, and all of that, to, to be, you know, very clear that we can, uh, you know, access the, the, the students that they go around with the UFT, have you approached them? The, the United Federation of Teachers? The thing is that, let me clarify something, I'm a scientist, okay? Right, you have time for that. Do it, do it, some education now, but I'm, I'm a scientist, I'm in the lab all the time, just teaching, yes. so, you know. So could I, can I suggest something? I, I'm not a scientist out there. Yeah. I've never, but I think... Well, we can collaborate. But I, I think that what, what I, I could, and many of us can bring to the table is our desire for the comes to be better. And our desire for, mm -hmm. our, for our kids to have a better chance in life. So I'm thinking what, what I'm hearing, you, you were saying $50,000, right? Mm -hmm. That sounds nothing compared to sometimes the, the politicians give 75,000 for, for workshops here, or, I mean, can we bring this proposal to even Ruben Diaz, the board of uh, president's office, who knows? This will be so good for the board. Why not? Uh, to, I mean, yes, to combination of politicians. So just, I mean, I will, we, let's talk to the president, because if, if, just like Fernandez was saying, between also and even, we could give something back to the community. That would be the feeder for your program. Mm -hmm. How good could that be? Exactly. And I'm even thinking about the summer um, camps here. They give so much nonsense to the kids. If we could expose them to two or three of those um, yeah, experiments, how wonderful would that be? Mm -hmm. So we will we will stay in touch. Right. We'll push Fernandez and mm -hmm. and, yeah. and uh, not that Fernandez, not your Fernandez. No, I'm not the idea that we don't have a conversation. But the thing I always 
clear what he's saying about really team effort and who's crystallizing the crisis. What we can do maybe, maybe, is instead of having only just one collaboration and share the students, we maybe in this summer program we can have all the professors or groups of professors have one project. And each of the students in each lab is going to build up and have results from this particular part of the entire project. So at the end, with the same effort, we might get a publication. If, if, if someone, in, if a student, a student will have it, they go to science, they, the, the way you show that you're good or bad in science is with publication. So if an undergraduate student should then get part of the publication, it's very good for the careers. So that that could be something that we can build. And I mean, in summary, you can get a publication after one, two, three years of work. But if it's a team effort, well, I get publication in months. But what I'm saying is, that, I know, I know, but but because I'm, I'm but no, the reality is that then it will be easier maybe to get. I mean, no. Funding, but we can say, well, not only is uh, experience in the lab that you have, also you have a path paper publication, which mm -hmm. is good. And mm -hmm. all, since all everybody collaborated, we can have a paper with all the students. No? Yeah, it's a potential if the collaboration works. One of the advantages, though, on the other side, mm -hmm. is that because I have mentors in such diverse areas. Yes that it gives the students more flexibility mm -hmm. to, to get involved. And while we haven't gotten the publication, they have, in fact, a formal presentation. Mm -hmm. And uh, those present, as a matter of fact, one first year, the presentation will be used for the opening. Mm -hmm. This summer, the presentations were just housed in the new science budget. What can be done is that those students Publications that that work can be published in Tribal, which is undergraduate student research. So we said we, we have a Tribal on the campus, mm -hmm. the chapter, uh -huh. and that can then be published in their term as a student publication. Right. So if we, it still counts as a publication. From the student's perspective, they're getting a benefit immediately out of it. And if you buying something out of the faculty, but in fact, it's a right, 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 right. But it depends on yes, getting yes. it. No, but that's what I'm saying, the best group yeah. groups because they're yeah. 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 I mean, two, two groups of modules, Gustavo uh, and Tom Kirchman, and they're graduate students. Cancer research. We had uh, aquatic biology in Iowa. We had uh, growth and development of the plants uh, and some aspects of that. Uh, a nice young fellow got involved with Natalie in gel chemistry. So it was, I mean, it was just all over the map. It was really yes. very, very interesting. And the students really get a lot out of it. Can you go ahead and post those students involved in that? Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. 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 They want to increase the number of students of what? Oh. Oh. So, I mean, my problem last year was that I didn't get from Hostos. Well, Francis, well, Francis, well, Francis, well, he was in yeah, I did. Okay, so switching gears, um, I want to talk about uh, the noise that. So what we have right now is a capacity building grant. A capacity building grant is to build infrastructure in order to allocate funds. Okay. So we're building the infrastructure, creating a mentoring program. Yeah, what are the qualifications we want for our students? Um, you know, uh, creating the dual degrees, um, coming up with a recruitment plan, and you know, how to get the word out. All those pieces are part of the capacity program for two years. And so then <clears throat> the noise, uh, and some of you may be, are some of you aware of noise? Mm -hmm. Based? Yeah, okay. Um, so I just want to let you know, I actually got the solicitation before NSF's web page went down. <laughs> and I can actually send you, I have a hard copy and I can scan it and I can send it to anybody who wants a copy of last year's solicitation. So this
these were the due dates then. Who knows, you know, we have the debt ceiling uh, issue and we need to open the government again. Um, but hopefully... 2014. Did we? Yeah. The government's already open. Yeah. That's so open. Going outside at church. I was working too hard on this. Two days ago.
we're giving, they're giving us a lot of flexibility in that, in those early internship experiences. Uh, <clears throat> the project leadership has to be both STEM and education, uh, and they have to work with public schools. <laughs> and they would like us working with master teachers, okay, master science teachers. Uh, I think this is a kind of, uh, there was, when this, I think when noise came out, what happened is educators went, <gasps> gone, and they all jumped in and kind of forgot to bring the science people in, you know? And so they had to kind of make it really clear that it had to be the science people <coughs> with education. Okay. So, um, you know, and I get that sense when I talk to them. Uh, and again, here we see this again, significant participation from the STEM faculty in the leadership of the project. Right? Um, so this can't, is not an education, education has to be there, but again, it can't be the leaders. It can't be the, you know, so you know we have, who do we have as the PI, the education person, but that's another story. So, um, but that's okay according to, to, to them. Um, so uh, again, we have to have STEM discipline, we have to have people. I, I literally took this off of the solicitation almost verbatim because uh, how I approach working on a new grant is I literally take the solicitation and I just bullet it out almost verbatim so that I don't lose any piece, okay? of what they want. Um, all team lead members need to play key roles, uh, and they encourage the two-year, four-year partnerships. I learned about this about three years ago at the National Science, at the National Association of Community College Teacher Pro Preparation, uh, our program, and um, NSF came in, and they said, we really want community colleges doing this not getting community colleges involved, and we're coming to you and saying, please do this. Okay? So um, this is, we're doing what they really want to see okay, with this two year career. Uh, <clears throat> scholarship recipients must be US citizens or national or permanent resident aliens. Okay? That's just NSF. Okay? That's just government funding. They must major in STEM. They cannot be education major with a minor in, in, uh, in a STEM. It has to be STEM, and then at Lehman, it's a minor in education. Yeah. Right, there's no major in education. No. Um, and New York State had changed all of this years ago, where you had to have a major in a discipline, and then you could either double major or minor in education. Um, <clears throat> And uh, the scholarship component, again, is in the last two years. Scholarship amounts must be at least 10000 per year. Okay. Um, however, no individual, someone could read. However, no individual may receive a scholarship any year that exceeds the yearly cost of attendance at the Because <laughs> I'm going, what's ours? Does this mean it's covering? It's a covering. The excitement should be covering their attendance at the institution. The cost. The cost of the attendance. That's the attendance. If, if the tuition is uh, three thousand dollars at Hostos for a semester, or six thousand dollars for the year. Uh, the student cannot receive ten thousand dollars. Okay. But then, why does it say amount to must be at least ten thousand? At least ten thousand dollars. Because the student, if this is a, this is for all colleges. No, I understand. I mean, so, Bell has one of them. Right. So if they're yeah. going to NYU, then it's going to cost. It's going to cost you like thirty or forty thousand okay. dollars. I'm just, I just see this as a conflicting yeah. statement. No. 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 Because it is saying it must. Must be at least 
Where do you expect them to be at that point? That's Completely oh. out of working ah. and out they would and be doing everything before we would So them. how many years do you think they're going to be uh, totally mm -hmm. here in Boston? So how many years they're going to finish their their marriage? Mm -hmm. uh, how many years they're going to do? This is why this is why I'm very strongly pushing the having them pass their um, placement test so that they're taking full college credit courses in their in their yes behind by that time so we're not going to bring them in while they're doing developmental work they will be not part of our newest project okay yeah well they have to they have to get over that hurdle because some of our students just stay over for years okay yes yeah, so they have a little bit of a conflict because um, they are saying there that they expect the students to get to the level of masters. Yeah. No, not master, not master degree. No, undergraduate degree. Initial certification. Yeah. 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 So they have five years, they need to be initially have initial certification and be prepared to start teaching. They Right. If a student here, for example, you start your program after your first year here in Austin, yeah. finish all that preliminary business. In the, in the second year, they take the science course. They complete the second year, they get their associates in the engineering program, and they join the new program. Two years of two years, and they can make it to baccalaureate. That is a three year supplemental program, and they're initially certified. Also, use that as a I know that's another another round is to do yeah. Now that's that's a really big vision for our whole school. Okay. I mean, it's very life life happens. Life happens. I I would I I I mean I I thought about that idea. I, you know because. Like that's the best way because then they have a massive out of the way and they can just keep going. Because remember, you don't pay for that. So as a result of that, they, it, it, it buffers life happening. Don't you keep that away from the third year school? I mean, how it's way over. Okay? But the point is, you're buffering the system by providing funds for them and summer experiences for them so that they and you can pay them to the summer to get involved. Yeah. And so this way, they don't have to get involved with the, the normal things that, that our kids are always working with. And it's a community. You recruit them, you give them a contract, and they go right to work. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we really need to. I mean, this is the kind of nitty gritty that we are going to have to do with deal with this year, is coming up with that plan. Right. That criteria for the, you know, the contract, the screening, when do they start, how long are they here, you know, the whole thing, okay, is this year's major task. Plus getting those degrees. Yeah. If you were selecting them one, one time, yeah, in this five year span, only one group of Well, them. our, what the way we have our children right now there's a two six credits here okay now i'm saying that those students we don't start counting them in that program until they've gone past all that developmental stuff and then they and they may have completed some of the math they may be good in math they may have completed some of the math they may have completed maybe some of the coursework and so they may be able to enter Lehman in less than two years. You know, they may be getting their associates. And so that's a real possibility. Um, but it may be that they take two years and then two years, and then, you know, we only have one year flexibility for them. I have one point that yeah. someone, suppose, complete all the requirement two years ago, before your program start. So when you do the selection, they are also eligible. You can pick from them also. Mm -hmm. There may be some good students. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 
We have to put that on the table. Absolutely, put that into the into the discussion. We have to put that into the discussion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I'm thinking about uh, when the evaluation has to happen because maybe the evaluation won't happen until maybe seven years because we need maybe if they are outside working in their schools. How are you going to measure the impact of the program just for one year of experience uh, as a teacher? Well, or do you want to track them a little bit more and more kind of you know what, I, way? what I would do with that is I would you know what I would personally do is look at existing funded programs and how they have handled that process of how they're tracking and when they're. Um, you know, using performance indicators, okay? And if they're comparing them to um, other new science chemistry um, teachers, are our, you know, <coughs> first year, is it fair to compare them in the first year, okay? Maybe it should be the second year, okay? Because we all know the first year is. Okay, but noise evaluator, they may insist on each year. That's why I'm saying I would want to look at the uh, pro at programs that have been funded and see how they handle that I'm, piece. I'm, I'm sorry, but there are another thing that I'm, I'm thinking, uh, I don't know uh, if they really uh, kind of get this B, uh, I mean, associate bachelor kind of compacted, mm -hmm. that they can really flow faster. Uh, maybe in the second or the third year they are almost done mm -hmm. and there's money I will think that, that they might be interested to use that money not only for activities that might be very uh, increase their, their preparation but also they might want to pursue their masters in education which I mean in science education so in other words I am trying to, to tell you here that we have all experience at Lehman with, with, in a school of education with the noise program. No, I know, yeah, I know and your they, noise program with senior masters. Yours but they senior are doing exactly, the, the bachelor and masters, they right. are together. But there's a lot of room for negotiation right. about how to get graduate courses even when they are doing still their undergraduate Studies in the menu. We just we just initiated an analogy of BAM that can right. move as a model to the system for all of these programs. Exactly. Okay. But uh, I'm just referring not the bachelor master in science, but the bachelor the that, that the initial certification. I'm thinking of of a transition from the minor to the to the masters in education. Yes. Yeah. And the bachelor in the major in the major only, even though right. we can think of course about doing the master in the major, but now I'm thinking about in the master in education. So what, I, what I'm saying is that in the major there yeah. now exists the model for the BA. Yeah, exactly. It took a long time to get the university to understand that you could double dip the grass. Right. Yes. But now that that exists, there's no reason why you can't have a bachelor's a BA, MA between, say, biology or chemistry or eggs in the major, and then for the masters, have it switched to the school of uh, education for science ed. Oh, okay. In other words, there's no reason why you can't do that. Exactly. Okay, okay. 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 everything. That's the all, all level. Yeah. That would okay, be so. A little ambitious. So I think, you know, I think we should put so, this on the table. Okay, so. um, and Look hard at our students and look at what we think, you know, how many would be able to do that. Exactly. Um, uh, and I was on I was on an NSF um, review team and the only thing I'm gonna say on this is I want um, one of the things was is not to try to do too many things. Like not to, to, to have so many objectives that they say this you're going beyond. So what I want to say is I really want to seriously consider this and I also want to like make sure that we're not taking
it, you know, that it, it creates a holistic whole program. Yeah. And That's what I mean. should be yes. a strategic and do the, yes, our research. first initial certification clearly yeah. stage. Yes. And then have mm -hmm. an open mind for whatever we find. And, in, and, in and, and then the staff would allow us to do, now. if the student was qualified, they would allow us to do that. Um, you know, that's a big break. But then the student, but then let me just say, but the students would have to choose to take a scholarship in the senior year and the master. You understand what I'm saying? They would have to be able to plan that out in advance because they only get two hours. So that's just one of the things. Yes. It's not a problem thing to do or five minutes or something, but I don't know if you've done this stuff. <coughs> but I would like to see, because everybody is talking about different timelines and so on. I would like to see all these hypothetical timelines that people have in a graphic form. So we see the hypothetical student and the different uh, milestones, right? such as completing these, what will be the hypothetical courses that this person will take, what will be the milestones in the way, and so we can compare all these graphic ways and it's very clear to everybody. At least I need to see those yeah, things in a graphic great. form. Uh, logical. And then we can have a better sense of these uh, five years and you know, we yeah. can be and maybe put some of the objectives out of that line. Ross Black has um, the degrees plotted out, and you can and you can really clearly see. First of all, they show how they link up with Lehman, and then it, he has uh, he has it worked out so that the students would be able to take 12 credits each semester, so they would call for their not for their financial aid, and he has that graphic. He's not here to show it. But then milestones are another piece. It's like, um, is chemistry, you know, screw 30, tend to be a milestone course that um, leads out students. Or something. Mm -hmm. Milestone and all this. Like, okay, uh, year zero, a student enters at Hoxwood and does the associate. Year two, the most and They start at leaving. Year three, whatever, you know, studying so this course of education. Other year, I don't know, think right. about the uh, certification like that. Okay, so I can, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, we actually do, we do yeah. have something. The other planning, planning. Yeah. the other way is planning. We do have that plan. We do have that plan. Um, but what we have to bring into this discussion is a host of those people, please chime in on this, is that the host of students um, do not come in um, very often to prepare for college or understand how to be a college student. Um, they need to take developmental courses. And so um, there's a lot of steps before they would actually be entering this program. And so those are, those are things we need to think about. But with a five-year limit, what I'm saying is, is that for the most of for our most of students, we need to make sure that when they start that five-year period, they can complete in five in five years. That's the big question. Yes. My concern is that this is we're concentrating on the students and the beginning of the first year. But as you say, as you say, that a lot of the students, whether it's the last year or whatever, uh, they come in underprepared. So what do we do with that population to let them know that this exists? How do we uh, recruit them? How do we mentor them so that we can say, here's an potential student? And how do we get that student? Because we don't want to wait until the first year and they're sitting there clueless and they just know something about a stipend. That's all they know. Yeah. We want to get them beyond a stipend. So we want to have, we want to make sure that there are workshops for them, mm -hmm. that they're motivating talks, uh, yeah. you know, a whole a whole bunch of things. Again, I love the word that, that uh, our colleague used. Uh, indoctrination. Indoctrination. I use yeah. propaganda. <laughs> <laughs> Reprogram. Yeah. Again, I know they sound horrible, but that's not what we want to do. Because it's 
they get programs to think they can't do anything. They get programs to think that they're useless. So now we have to re-educate them like they did in China and Russia and the other world. You know? So, but seriously, you understand what I'm saying? So we have to start as soon as they come through the door and not wait until you know the, the, the year that they're going to start this because they won't know what this is all about. I'm not saying that we can't. Well, I guess I will have to ask people at NSF when I can begin, when we could begin offering activities, okay, that would be three, five years, three, um, and maybe give us some flexibility because they want our population of students. They want this type of partnership, and so we might be able to work something out. It strikes me that if you present to the NSF as part of this package, the fact that you're going to do that, you have students who come in who need developmental work. They're not over But in the, during the process of the developmental work, Created a structure exactly. that you begin yes. to talk about. Exactly. Yes, or absolutely. Is, and then you use that first summer as a key workshop. And the thing is, that an issue. Once the student is accepted, you can no longer say if the student is is qualified, they will, because you make the determination yes, that by accepting right. them, they qualify. That's true. You go all the way. Absolutely. So you have to say that. The other thing is, you automatically have your timeline for evaluation because they have to complete their two for one service in eight years. So you have eight years of monitoring after this. So it's already built in. So the key becomes if you finish the development workshops and turn this go out there, bringing into that in service minority teachers as models to explain what they're doing. Yeah. That this is a, a, a career purpose you do that in that developmental year and in the summer workshop and then bring them into the year one of this program and then they actually flow through. Right. So, right. so we you know okay. There, there's gonna be a lot of work on that. There really is. And uh, and I'm gonna have to be talking to them. I'm gonna be bothering them <laughs> Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, so the institution will require um, that the recipient must, you know, so we have to have a contract, they accept the terms of the scholarship, and that they have, uh, um, that they have annual certification of employment, okay? We, once they exit and then start teaching, we need to have annual certification of employment, and up-to-date contact information. So this is part of the contract that the student signs. This is so we can track their teaching. We have to We have to Yeah, we have to know that they fulfill those four years of teaching. Um, okay, so monitoring all of this, scholarships, stipends, recipients, um, and their service requirement is our job. Yeah. Okay, so that they make it real clear. You do it. And you know who I think should do it, be part of it, is the development office. Because somehow or another, the people in development can always find you. You know, you move, and then you're you know, where you went for your VA, they go sending you a letter like next the following week and then you get your masters and then when you got your PhD. Like somehow or another, they can find you. No matter where you are living. So I always feel like this is the office place to go to to track the students. Get them on your Facebook. That's your Facebook. Your, or your Facebook. That's what you can do with the yeah. track along that way. Yeah, okay. Yep, then they do. Okay, um, so failures is satisfied, okay, for forfeiture of the scholarship and the stipend award will revert to loan with repayments by the student. Okay, this is just like, you know, teaching for America and all the other. Yeah, the teacher academy. Teacher academy. Yeah, 
teacher academy, all of these types of programs have this component. Um, <clears throat> and again, we're responsible for collecting <laughs> the money. <laughs> Okay. Now, so you have this five years plus eight years, you have 13 years, okay, okay, of monitoring, and then if they haven't completed in that after the 13 years, then you're after them for collecting the money. I mean, so I said, this is big. Um, so then I just, okay, and this is the end, I just want to say that, you know, I have a hard copy, I may now be back up on NSF website, so you probably can get it um, from last year. They usually don't come out with this solicitation until January, and what I'll try to do is give them a call now and say, uh, will the dates have changed because the government have been closed for a period of time to see where they are. I did ask the last um, year when their, um, the sequester went in effect, I said, um, how does this affect the noise funding? And um, Joan Cabal, who's the head person for noise, said to me, she said, this is a very popular program on both sides of the aisle. People love noise. And so she doesn't expect the funding to, she may, expects it to remain flat. And for that to be, a, that would not be a problem. So um, you can contact me there. And uh, now we can continue. Um, we have 10 minutes. Uh, we did a lot of discussion. We did 10 minutes, and then Orlando's going to come up and just describe the teacher certification, which most of you don't know about. I need to know about because New York State is complicated. Okay, yes. Yeah, uh, so I'll present our book future project. I sit in quiet because uh, she knows everything, but we work with like a team. And uh, a few points what I would like to add. Because for this project, particular capa capacity building project, we concentrate on the two degrees. It's chemistry and environment. First. Why? Sarah just explained, because it's shortage of these teachers. But in the uh, next project, uh, phase one, we try to expand. And first of all, we, uh, we include biology, because we have a lot of resources in biology in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Costas and, of course, in Lehman. And also we try to involve, uh, it will be physics, physics, and probably math. 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 So in this case, we practically uh, uh, include all uh, uh, science, science. Well, no, I think of it as the Hostos, Lehman, STEM initiative. So that, you know, I see this as, as yeah. like actually creating a, like a, a, a complete set of STEM programs that we are offering and that we are known for. Yes, this is something we would be known for. And additionally, additionally, like a, uh, this question was raised, how students know about program and how they will be involved. First of all, we're planning to have a uh, uh, summer program, special summer program, and summer program will include. First of all, we're planning summer some summer program in Black Rock Forest. Some summer program will be in American Museum of Natural History. And for experience, we probably can involve some international uh, scholarship. Uh, for example, another project, just another project who has phase one. They have a uh, summer program. They bring students to Galapagos Island. And they were in the Galapagos Island. And they teach it actually in school in the Galapagos Island. So, in other, in other, yes, in other program, they took students to uh, a large barrier reef in Australia. They studied corals in this place. So, this is a lot of opportunities. What are these opportunities? So, we have 
like this opportunities, for example, uh, Yuri working in the Creek and possibilities to involve students in the Creek. So, in this, yes, Creek in Greece. So, in this case, uh, this is like a quite broad aspect we're planning to include. And if you give us idea what you think, we can uh, maybe combine these ideas also. So that is I just would like to add. Absolutely. And yeah. I, and one other thing I wanted to say was that someone said uh, Sarah wrote a great. I want to make something really clear. This was an amazing experience for me. Uh, Vladimir Bronson and I sat would sit, and it was usually at night because we didn't ever these on. So uh, there we were at night in the science department with projector and computer, and we would project up on the wall the text, and we wrote every word three people writing together. I mean, we would like focus. Like I would take a section, I would write, I do research, I would come up with stuff, I bring it in. Ross would fall and I'm not saying, you know, we would do independent, but then we would come together. And I really think that that is why it, it got funded the first time out. I think that when faculty write grants, they are, that the um, success rate is much higher. So, um, and, I, and I just want to acknowledge that. I'm very glad to be here today, so I want to give you an overview of how we think the noise scholars will uh, navigate the, the initial certification at Lehman College. So, many questions are, have been uh, uh, people doing about how this happened. If they need a master's, for example, how they get certified, what do they need there? So. Uh, are they going to do this on their own? Are they going to be helped? So all of these questions will be answered as, as we kind of navigate the, the, the presentation, okay? Right. Good. So, first of all, I want to point it out what is needed to receive the initial certification. So we're going to concentrate in that initial certification, which is what they can do first. So according to the near state uh, requirements, we need to complete the bachelor, the student need to complete the bachelor degree the first. That would be the main. They also uh, have to meet certain uh, liberal arts and science requirements, which in our case are included in the mind. And of course, I put something here because we are thinking here on a path if they're going to have, uh, that would be um, help by the, if they like to have the product, okay, now this is, uh, okay, I just, this morning, what I want to say is that basically they're going to be proposed by the institution, they're going to be helped by the institution, but they're not going to do this in their own. So that's why this is there, that I want you to know that we have a program advisor whose name is Rose Jordan. We're going to give a name to a person who will be the program, the, the certifications officer, who will lead with things about evaluation of training is, is needed, is needed, and how to help students to navigate the process. Now, uh, another requirement is that they have to complete the supervised training teaching. So the student teaching, uh, and they supposed to be, ah, that's, that's what I was looking for, if they are seeking for institution recommendation. In other words, people can get an initial certification without an institutional, an institutional recommendation, but we are not going to that path. We're going to the path that we're going to have students and actually recommend them for, for that uh, certification. And of course, uh, they have to take the certification exam. Now, um, there are new certifications exams that are going to be, that are already in place and they will be required for all the who graduate after May, uh, this spring, uh, 2014. So, we're going to talk a little bit about that too. 
and of course the stay mandate uh, fingerprints clearance and also the applicant had to open an account there uh, with them to put their, their stuff in there, to that their file completed there. So these are the major, I mean the, the requirements that the states is, we're going to talk a little bit more about what are those courses that are here, that if you're going to do it individually without the institutional recommendation, well, people can get those courses done anyway. They want now, I take it as an example the science certification path, uh, particularly uh, in the middle school and middle high school education department, which I belong to. I'm a member of the department. So I want to do it, but this is kind of a disclaimer here, because I want to do it as I, it will look like, and not as it like exactly as it looks now. And the reason is because if you look at what it looks like now, you're going to see that they all exams are there. The last, uh, the liberal art, uh, the ATSW, and this is not what's going on now. So I kind of make a little bit of magic here and translate this of what it should look like. And at the same time, may, minor ch changes of whatever I am saying here could be implemented in the future because this has to be coordinated with the advice of the um, discipline based, in, that in this case the science advisors, the science education or educators that are the advisors of this field. So this is nothing we can do at the wrong. Now, so I took that kind of, 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 of prior that they have and I tried to put it together here and go and explain this a little bit more uh, in a more complete way. So, the actual program, they divided in three parts. Many people might think that just doing the minor does that the certification. And it happened that the minor is just one piece or one component of this course. The other is that they need an extra teaching method to do it. And that's another component. And the, the student teaching experience is as well. This is, yes. So we're talking about six courses. We're going to tell you exactly uh, how many are okay. there. I can't tell you exactly how many. Many we're talking a little bit about more courses, okay. more than six. Mm -hmm. And that's the interesting thing when you're going to budget and when you're going to plan. Yeah, right? I know. Right. 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 For, for example, as, 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 um, so this is, I will go into the details of the three uh, major components of this program mm -hmm. inside. But this is kind of uh, put it together, they're going to complete the minor, they're going to uh, grab it with this completing uh, this other two. Now, when, once they are at Lehman, they don't have to declare a major, because that's something that we already talked about today. They can be a major in a discipline, in this case, air science and chemistry. Then they can complete the course sequences there, and they are going to do the new exams. There are these. I didn't highlight this one, although it's changing, it's still I'm putting the old uh, version, because the content test is the one that is the one that has changed less, least. Uh, but I'm putting here because I've been reading about what's going on, and I will put an example of one law uh, to tell you things that the, the states is implementing uh, currently, and they are making these changes to appear. But this also can disappear in the future. Yeah. There are other kind of uh, conflicting interests of the state when they not only want to accomplish this right now as these are, I'm talking about these workshops, mm -hmm. additional workshops, uh, but they might be part of the coursework in the future. So this is something that has been thought in different ways. So, so far, this is what's going on. We do, uh, and Lehman wants the student to keep uh, an overall uh, GPA. GPA, and of course, in the, in the courses that refers to the menu, we, we expect them to be before, I uh, mean, above. Uh, 3.0 of our And in the set 
technical courses that are very interesting for us. There are basic courses, foundations courses that I will explain to you immediately. So this is the mind. So you see, I'm just explaining number one, I'm giving you four courses. Not the student teaching, no. But I am asking the students to go to English and, and come English 120 and come 100, which is foundations of oral communication. This is required because the necessity of students to develop their language, and this is nothing to do, as I was saying, with that. We also aim to develop the academic language within the instruction of the discipline. And also, if we are thinking about teachers, we have to figure out a way when they are even in the courses, uh, in the major, in the way that we can explain them how this could be explained to others in order to make them to think about what is the target at the end to become teachers. So some of, some of the things have to be thought carefully. Now, in terms of the, net, the minor, as is required, as is uh, completed, they just can complete the minor with that. And that's it. But that doesn't lead yet, I mean, it's not yet enough to make the certification to, and this is where there are certain QE tests that they have to do, and there are, they, they, we usually ask them to submit, to submit the skills of last, in this case it would be academic teacher skills, and suddenly do that before going to, to, uh, the student teaching. So uh, let's consider this as, as, as kind of step two, kind of, but this before student teaching, but it doesn't have to do anything with that. They're going to do the meta course, they're going to do that. Okay? Are you, are you okay? So, yes, any question? Yeah, I'm just curious about something. The previous slide had 12 grades. Mm -hmm. Now you have four more, which is exactly. We haven't yet got student teaching. No, okay. and there are six more there. Okay. My question is this. This is predicated on the concept that there's a major and a minor. Mm -hmm. Q is doing away with the minor. Exactly. So how do I incorporate this into the discipline? Okay. That's a, that's a good question. And that's, I have it in my last slides, as you were going to say. But uh, I do have the idea that the minor is no longer required. Right. I do know that. So, now, the point here is what would be the benefits of a minor, and the question is very well directed, to towards certification. Okay? So, many people, and I will say, my answer would be the preparation that they can get. If they wanted to do it on their own without a minor, they can do it. But they can do it, but are they going to be prepared for that? We're going to, and this is uh, what it's what all is about. Particularly now, we are trying to get some accreditations of some of the undergraduate programs, which we're not all also part of the official uh, uh, program that we actually have. So I am uh, uh, not. I don't know exactly to what extent the undergraduate program is as a proof in science there, but we don't have in the, in the mathematics, we are trying to, to get it to make a sense of we have this in the graduate program, but, but the, the undergraduate program as a minor is what we have, and we have them through certifications by doing this. So in other words, they have a lot to do before student teaching. And the student teaching, basically I'm putting here together some kind of uh, information about how they, they should apply. They always are expected to apply one semester before the actual student teaching is happening. And this has to do with fingerprints, has to do with also a, a, a process of, it's, a, it's an application that is processes, uh, and, and we see they have uh, the prerequisites that are required, uh, the methods course, and that's why the method course is there. Now, I maybe pass a little bit uh, fast over the fact that one of the points that were there, that, that they were expecting the student to have 50 percentage of their work in the discipline, in the major, before coming into the, into the minor. 
so I didn't kind of point it out, but I just remember it because it's kind of a preparation, and we want our students to to be strong in the in the in the content area, and therefore sometimes they're in the method courses if they don't have if they don't have a strong background in the science or in the subject matter of the discipline, we have a problem. We have a problem. They cannot get an understanding of how to teach uh, the subject. So this is why I'm putting together here the special, the content special test, the new test that's called education, educating all students, and the one that's kind of making a lot of noise is the the the, 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 the EDPA. The EDPA is the, the teaching performance assessment. It's making a lot of noise because it has certain components, have a video component, have a unit plan, they call it a segment, a, 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 a teaching segment. And they have to also justify in written, in written all the why they are doing that unit, what is the class that they're going to be, uh, or, the, or, the, or the piece of the class they're going to present in a very short video. And a lot of things have to do here with the development. All of this is around the development of the academic language. So a, a lot of emphasis is, uh, is put into students to know how to write and how to justify themselves, that they are uh, how to justify their plan, their lesson plans, their actions during this. So this is really uh, an important work that we're doing in the, in the School of Education about how to prepare the student for those tests as well. Now, these are, now, the student teaching was one course, but the seminar was including that there, and now we're separating them. But still, they had always had six credits, no matter what. Six. Six credit. They look like two courses, but this is just the same course. The students are doing the student teaching. They are doing it in the schools, but they meet in a seminar when they discuss what's going on. And now they are preparing for the editing here. So in other words, when I am, I was explaining about, yes, when I was explaining about the order here, the EDPA sometimes can be thought to be done after the student teach. Okay? Because they will prepare for that day, the EDPA. And they can, some people think that they should be uh, uh, considering the evaluation of the teaching, student teaching experience, but some of us think that it's too early. They can maybe not pass that, but it doesn't mean anything. Uh, we can think about some of these as also for the evaluation. We can think about this, but this would be as a service teaching, not as a service teaching. Okay? So, and this course, this course, uh, we have another course now that is special needs, has been also the course in the special education has to do a lot with this test because this test has to do with teaching else, with teaching students special ed. So we're going to create modules that will help in all the disciplines and in all the school and all the programs how to prepare the student for, for those, for that particular test and for all the others. So this is the move. So I put here some idea of the help that they're going to get in Lima when they are doing the fingerprints. And I would say that we have uh, a person who is the coordinator, the, the, the coordinator of professional development network, of the professional development network, and her name is Avani Benil, who is the one who got all the control with the student teaching, the, the placement, etc., etc., and they have here the workshops, and uh, in, in the same, in our school, we kind of do the fingerprints there. Sometimes it happens that the student might want to do the student teacher outside the New York City uh, DOE and they might go on their own in terms of how to do this. So something can they do, they can do it on their own, but we have this support so far, which is very valuable. Then I put the, 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 the workshops and again I am 
reinforcing the idea that the, the Lima College of uh, Office of Continuing Education covered all of this preparation. Of course, it doesn't mean that you have to do it, uh, the preparation that they have. It will be very valuable for many, for many. And I am including the bullying prevention, which is not now used. I mean, we are doing the workshop, but it's not, it's not, not a required. Not, not required. So I put in here, for example, how this car do that, and when it's effective, and in the case of, of this particular test. And at the same time, I'm trying to explain that here in the last, uh, that in any case, Doing this, wherever you do it, you have to be, uh, you have to get the certification from a provider who is actually uh, authorized to do it by the state, and and then you can email it this personally. Mm -hmm. But in other words, we have also always the officer will have them there. Now, but this is not everything. So let's say put it here, the mine is no longer required. Maybe a little bit uh, redundant here, but you can complete, uh, but you are going to be helped toward the certification in the first place. We're going to be helping you. And then we have a special person, which is our only private program coordinator in the middle high school and the other departments. In particular, in our department is Daniel Stuka, and he had to do with all the this program run and we have also the Gillian Bay and West Beach in science education which who are the person who wants to coordinate about any changes that might occur here. Now uh, again I put on the last part of talking about the possibility for students to send their studies and the masters. But I want to concentrate in the in the in the initial yeah. And, the, and the bachelor and the initial certification because it's the most uh, interest for now. But it's interesting what we were talking about the possibility of doing certain uh, courses at the graduate level that can be double deep or counted and reduce enormously the master. I know this has to be uh, negotiated yeah, yeah. And, and will be excellent for the students if they can get uh, a little bit uh, more for the their Field experience internship, right? So that's 